What is up guys, DZ Fear, and today I have a very exciting video that I've been planning for a few weeks now. This is going to be a pretty big collaboration with many of your favorite Yugi tubers, so make sure to stick around and see what other people have to say about today's question. The question for today is what is the best new card of 2019, or what is your favorite new card of 2019? What's really cool is that even though most people just answered their favorite card, most of those cards actually did see tons of competitive play, which I think is awesome. One of the other things that I noticed is that pretty much everyone answered different answers, which is really cool because it means that there were lots of good cards that released in 2019. So this is sort of a positive video talking about some of the cooler and exciting cards released from the past year because, as you guys know, the year is going to come to a close pretty darn soon. Anyway, before we get to everyone else's answers, let me talk about my answers a little bit before. And I'm actually going to answer this in two different ways. I will answer both what I feel is one of the best new cards of 2019 and also answer what I I feel is my favorite card of the entire year. So what is the best card in my opinion, or one of the best cards from this past year? Well, I really feel like Dengirsu is that for me personally. And I know it sounds weird, you know, I don't play Orcus, but if we look at which one individual card made more of an impact than almost any other new card from the past year, I believe that it has to be Dengirsu. There certainly are some other cards that come close to what it has uh, sort of accomplished here. I mean, Phantasma is a really good one, which I believe is uh, one of the other answers you'll hear in this video, but I truly believe that Dengirsu changed the game, and I do believe that that is one of the biggest reasons that Orcus is successful right now. While Orcus do have a lot of cool tools at their disposal without the Dengirsu, I mean, you know, many of their core cards were in the first wave of support, Galatea and Harpoor and Symbol Skeleton, I believe that Dengirsu and its ability to send a card without targeting, as well as its ability to not only protect the board, but also recycle your banished cards, I believe that all those things in one card is really, really good. I mean, obviously we know that, it's topping tournaments all over the place. What about my favorite card though? Well, my favorite card is a card that I believe is very competitive, not as competitive as Dengirsu, but I'm going to go with Pot of Extravagance. You know, it feels like just yesterday when I wasted $700 on a box, or not a box, a case of Savage Strike, it only pulled two copies of Pot of Extravagance, so I had to buy a third, but Pot of Extravagance is a card that I've used a lot. You know, I play Altergeist, I play Guru Control, I play some other decks, and a lot of them use Pot of Extravagance. I feel like it's a really cool sort of way to give an advantage to decks that don't use their extra deck as much as the other decks out there. But what I really appreciate about Pot of Extravagance is that it helps out the decks like Altergeist, you know, that used to play Pot of Desires, and it helps them out by rewarding them for not having any other draw effects in their entire strategy. You wouldn't really see in most cases Pot of Extravagance and like True Dracos, for example, not only because they don't have an extra deck, but also because they have a lot of other powerful draw effects. You know, you have the Card of Demise, you have the Heritage, the Disciples, but in a deck like Altergeist or Guru control where you normally wouldn't have another piece of draw power, Pot of Extravagance is really, really valuable. But it's also cool because a lot of rogue decks can take advantage of it. You know, I think I saw some Dragon Maid players using it. You see some Necros players using it. A lot of different more casual and rogue decks can really take advantage of Pot of Extravagance more so than maybe people would be willing to use Pot of Desires. You know, Pot of Desires, the drawback isn't huge, but sometimes people don't want to do that. They don't want to banish the top 10 cards of their deck. But if you don't care about your extra deck as much, maybe Pot of Extravagance is an awesome alternative. Of course, the card is pretty pricey, and I feel bad for those of you that can't afford it and you want to play it in your Altergeist deck. Hopefully this coming year, 2020, we will actually see a reprint of Pot of Extravagance. I mean, you know, almost certainly Pot of Extravagance will be in the next year's Megatons, but maybe even it'll get reprinted before that. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that is my favorite new card of 2019, as well as one of the cards that I felt was like one of the most impactful cards of the entire year. Make sure to stay tuned and listen to some of the opinions of your favorite Yugi tubers. My favorite card of 2019 without a doubt is Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. This card is just absurd, and the first time I read it, I was absolutely blown away. It's essentially a pot of greed in a monster, which allows you to go plus one in terms of card advantage. It allows you to shape and sculpt your hand in any way you choose, and putting back some of your bricks or mandatory engine requirements may turn on some of your key play starters to ensure that your deck is inherently more consistent. It's a 2400 attack body, which can hit over most things in the metagame, and is very relevant in very specific specific matchups, and if that weren't enough, it also protects your entire field of monsters from targeting effects. So your plays are going to go through against any matchup that has a lot of targeting based removal. This card just does it all right, and yeah, it's really expensive, but the thing I think I really like the most about Phantasme is the fact that it's not archetype specific. There's a plethora of different decks that can benefit from playing Phantasme, and it doesn't hinder their overall game plan, and I think that's a really good thing to have. I always love when we get generic support cards like this 
this. And again, it may be out of some people's price range, but honestly, there is no card that can replace what Phantasme does. So that's what I feel justifies the price. And I think that's convincing enough for me to make it my favorite card of 2019. My favorite card for the 2019 calendar year is probably Dart Ruler No More. Dart Ruler No More is a card which wins the game. The problem, however, is that combo decks haven't been necessarily too great. If you ever are paired up against some kind of a combo deck, or you know someone at your locals or regional is going to be playing some kind of heavy combo deck, this card is insane! Probably to the point it's like a little bit unfair. I'm sure this card will see much more play in the future when we do see some more combo heavy decks, especially with Needle Fiber coming out in just a few months. Until then, Dart Ruler no more. Hey guys, it's Paul from Team APS, and my favorite card to release this year is Gizmek Orochi the Serpentron Sky Slasher. So I think that this card's actually incredible. It's such a versatile card. You can use it in a lot of different decks. Even though we see it used in things like Orcus, you can technically use it in anything. Yes, the cost is kind of steep. Banishing eight cards off the top of your deck isn't always very fun, but the fact that you can get a free beat stick that's 2450 in attack and defense even in your opponent's turn, is actually really strong, and you can even pop cards with it. And you can use it for so many different things. It's, you know, material for Xyz monsters, material for Link monsters, it's a Dart Machines, so there's a lot of synergy there, and it looks really nice too. I'm actually looking forward to the entire Gizmex series that seems to be coming out, so yeah. It's easily my favorite card of the year. Hi guys, my name is Sam, from the YouTube channel Team Samurai X1. I recently started Yu-Gi-Oh! tubing. Is that what you guys call it? <laughs> Thank you so much for featuring me on your channel today. And let's talk about my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card of 2019 and why. My favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card of 2019 has to be Great General of the Six Samurai, aka Battle Shogun of the Six Samurai. I've been waiting for this card to come out for the past year now, and I'm just really glad that we got this card out of the Chaos Impact Special Edition. My YouTube channel is actually based off of Six Samurai. Six Samurai is my favorite archetype, and especially my favorite card in that deck is Gateway of the six gateway of the six is at one we have one gateway of the six and in six samurais if you draw gateway you basically win the duel but it's so hard to draw gateway when it's a one of in a six samurai based deck so with the release of great general as long as you summon great general the six samurai you get access to gateway immediately directly from your deck to your hand and once you get access to gateway you just automatically win the duel. The amount of crazy combos that you're actually able to facilitate using that one card is absolutely ridiculous and Great General of the Six Samurai just made it so much easier for Six Samurais to become competitive in a 2019-2020 format. So with that being said guys, my name is Sam from Team Samurai. I love Six Samurais and I love Battle Shogun of the Six Samurais. And yeah, that's my favorite card of 2019. What is yours? My favorite card of 2019 hands down, has to be Crackdown. This card is insane. In a sense, it's a quick effect. Snatch and Steal, that's at three, yet it doesn't really impress itself on the metagame because there's so many crazy cards out there, and it's not searchable so much but whenever i have something like a thunder dragon colossus backed by another interruption in this i find that they've already committed their normal summon another extender and usually i'm able to just steal the game away a highly underestimated card that i think we'll find in top cut decks through the years to come where people don't expect it as much my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card of 2019 well damn that's easy how about the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh? servant of endymion Single-handedly brings out Electrum with one card. Single-handedly stops hand traps. Single-handedly stops Altergeist traps. And hey, every spell and trap in the game, I bring out Mighty Master. And overall, one of the most broken cards I've ever read in my life. And easily one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh cards in history. Servant of Endymion. My favorite card of 2019 is actually one released rather recently, and it's one that I don't have to look too far to find because it's literally in every deck I play almost now. That is uh, IP Mask Arena. Sick card with a really easy summoning condition uh, and a really powerful effect. Uh, I really expect this card to change like the future of Link Summoning too. As more Link monsters get released, this card only gets better, and that's so exciting. Who decided it was a good idea that on top of the fact that you can Link Summon on your opponent's turn, it also can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects? Uh, okay, seems pretty good to me. For 2019, I think my favorite card is a two-way tie. If I had to pick a card that's actually good that I enjoy playing, Marinsis Coral Anemone would be the card I would pick. 
This generic water Link 2 monster, made of just two water monsters, lets me summon one of my swap frogs from the graveyard, and the arrows are pretty nice. Also, it has a similar floating effect to Totally Awesome, so it just means you get to recur a little bit of your advantage back. It's neat. I really do enjoy the card and the boost it's given to some of my favorite decks. However, if I had to pick a card simply based on, I don't know, just because I like it, Squirt Squid! I don't know, I just, it's it's not very good, uh, it's just kind of neat. I do enjoy some of these weirder card effects simply because um, it just shows that, you know, Konami every once in a while gets a little creative with their card design. Sadly, that normally means the cards are bad, but they are at least interesting, and it's nice to see that uh, they, they still have some, some creative flair there at the old Konami R&D. But yeah, I think those two cards are really awesome, and thank you, Doug, for having me.